everybody welcome to study number four in the book of Judges and study four in Judges ironically covers chapter number four in Judges and there are two questions that we're going to cover today first of all why do you think that Barack not Obama was unwilling to undertake the campaign without Deborah does this reveal a defect in his faith what insight does this give into God's willingness to bear with our human frailty? And second, who was the real architect of Israel's victory? And what practical application has this for us today? Judges chapter number four. Let's take a look at it together. After Ehud died, the Israelites once again did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, a king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazar. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Herosh Hagoim, because he had 900 iron chariots and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. They cried out to the Lord for help. Deborah, prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel at that time. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, she held court under the palm of Deborah, king of Ramah, and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites came to her to have their disputes decided. And she sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kedesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take with you ten thousand men of Naphtali and Zebulun, and lead the way to Mount Tabor. I will lure Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River, and give him into your hands. And Barak said to her, If you go with me, I will go, but if you don't go with me, I won't go. Very well, Deborah said, I will go with you, but because of the way you are going about this, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will hand Sisera over to a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh, where he summoned Zebulun and Naphtali. Ten thousand men followed him, and Deborah also went with him. Now Heber the Kenite had left the other Kenites, the descendants of Hobab, Moses' brother-in-law, and pitched his tent by the great tree in Zenanim near Kadesh. And when they told Sisera that Barak, son of Abinoam, had gone up to Mount Habor, Sisera gathered together his nine hundred iron chariots and all the men with him, from Kerosheth Hagoim to the Kishon River. Then Deborah said to Barak, Go, this is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down to Mount Tabor, followed by the ten thousand men, and at Barak's advance the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and army by the sword, and Sisera abandoned his chariot and fled on foot. But Barak pursued the chariots and army as far as Kerasheth Hagoim, and the troops of Sisera fell by the sword, and not a man was left. And Sisera, however, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Canite, because they were friendly, friendly relations between Jabin the king of Hazor and the clan of Heber the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in, don't be afraid. So he entered her tent, and she put a covering over him. I'm thirsty, he said, please give me some water. So she opened a skin of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him up. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. If someone comes by and asks you, is anyone here, say no. But Jael, Heber's wife, picked up a tent peg and, hammer, and a hammer and went quietly to him while he lay fast asleep, exhausted. She drove the peg through his temple into the ground, and he died. Barak came by in pursuit of Sisera, and Jael went out to meet him. Come, she said, I will show you the man you are looking for. So he went in with her, and there lay Sisera with the tent peg through his temple, dead. One would think. <laughs> Verse 23, On that day God sub subdued Jabin the Canaanite king before the Israelites, and the hand of the Israelites grew stronger and stronger against Jabin the Canaanite king, Canaanite king excuse me, until they destroyed him. Question number one, Why do you think that Barak, not Obama, was unwilling to undertake the campaign without Deborah? And does this reveal a defect in his faith? And what insight does this give into God's willingness to bear with our human frailty? Well, I think that Barak had a hard time believing that a woman could be the voice of the Lord uh, with the same assurance that a man could. Yes, it does show a lack of faith on his part, as well as maybe a little bit of male chauvinism as well. God can and he will use whoever is available. Men that don't want to have a woman in spiritual leadership need to make sure that they've made themselves qualified to lead. 
Question number two, who is the real architect of Israel's victory and what practical application has this for us today? Well, the real ar architect of Israel's victories and any victories that we have as well is always the Lord. It was never a man, it was never a woman that won the battle. If the Lord is for us, who can be against us? You may be in a battle today. I hope that you're on the side of the Lord. If you're on the side of the Lord, if you're obedient to Him, He will not sell you out to the enemies. If you cry out to Him, He will return to you as He always returned to the nation of Israel. And He will win your victories for you if you obey His commands and are obedient to Him. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope you're walking in obedience to the Lord. God bless and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.